I never seen a stagecoach heading west, but I wanted to be on it. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be up there, handling the ribbons on them six-horse teams, with a messenger riding shotgun beside me and 22 foot of whip cracking over the leaders. 30 miles a day. That's the only job I ever wanted. Driving the mainliner to Deadwood and Tombstone, to Rawhide and Silver City, west to the Black Hills and the Gold Country, going places them railroads never seen. Carrying freight, passengers, gold in the U.S. mail. Well, I'm driving all right, if you can call it that. Crawling from Weed Creek to Red Rock on a mud wagon. Setting up there beside old Uncle Ben, eating dust, pushing mules. that broken down chuck wagon. Back up yourself. This is a mail coach. Whatever it is, get on and clear your wheeler. We'll pull it off. Clear it yourself. Looks like he don't want to get his boots dirty. Skin the hide off of him. Dropped your whip, mister. Take the other one, Race. I got this one. Nothing to take, boy. You'll not give us any more trouble. This is for your bulls. Now get over there and ease your wheel back on my... Take it ahead, Clem. Nice quiet morning, Ben. Seen worse. Red Rock's getting a little crowded. We'll have to widen the streets. Sure glad you were here, Race. That bit off a pretty big chunk, boy. Yeah, but he looked a lot smaller when you came along. Better get the mail on over to Bowen. He's waiting for him. What mail? Nothing in the pouch but one package and three hands for passengers. What kind of driving was that? Well, I tried to pull in the way you like, Mr. Bowen. Saving the open and swinging fast for a good showing at the station. Only that main ox team sort of got in the way. Next time, pick something smaller than a bullfighter's outfit to tangle with. Knock what's left out of those mules and you'll be hunting another job. Manifest for you to sign, Jess. You take care of it, Uncle Ben. Old Luke sharpening his teeth on you, boy. All he does is ride that swivel chair thinking up things to get sore about. I ain't taking no more of it, Race. Now, oh, simmer down, kid. He don't mean nothing by it. It's a bit stiff in the neck, but he's the best division superintendent in these parts. Don't you get any wrong ideas about him being a swivel chair, boss. Luke was driving on this line when bandits were holding up everything. Couldn't squeeze a dime through between here and Julesburg. Remember one time me and Luke had Tom Davis and Rick a decoy. Tom and a couple of others dressed like women passengers rode inside. Regular traveling arson. Well, they hit us around Lance Creek, chopped a tree down right across the road. I hollered up the driver and I told him to cut left and keep going. He did. Right into the barrels of ten blazing guns. Eight. Well, how'd you know? Killed two of them before you ever woke up. How are you, Tom? Fine, Race. Come on in and have a drink. They're all free. I figured they would be when I saw how polite Jess was listening. <laughs> morning, Race. Good morning. Hey, Race, how do I look? Fine. Waco. Great day in the morning. Where are your working clothes? I almost didn't recognize you all covered up that way. I'm going to a wedding. A wedding? You deserting me for a husband? 
No. My sister's getting married over in Silver City. I'm taking the mainline stage today. Good. You have me on board with you. Race today ain't your run. But Bowen's got something special on. Who else does he use? This calls for celebration. Charlie, give the lady a bucket of champagne. Champagne it is. Champagne for the lady. Say, Sheriff Tom, they want you over the jail. They got a mad dog. Mad dog. Dangerous times around here. Nothing happens here now. Sheriff dog catching, nobody in jail since the 4th of July, and me pounding the dust to Weed Creek. Things sure have changed. Not like they used to be when you had that Julesburg run, huh, Race? No law around then. Only these, boy. They always had the last word. They always will have. Maybe the loudest. This has a last. Depends on who's wearing it. Wait a minute, Tom, and I'll go with you. Charlie, give them whatever they want. Give away a double for the dust. <laughs> Don't you be late. Not this trip, Race. Oh, welcome, my boy, welcome. I see you're the bearer of gifts. This came in on the stage for you. Ah, books. The sepulchres of thought. Longfellow. Uh, sit down, son, sit down. Thanks, Mr. Riley, but I haven't much time. Oh, well, in that case, you don't want to be wasted on me. Now, if you should be looking for a certain young lady, it's quite possible you'll find her in there. Thanks, Mr. Riley. real pretty all rumpled up that way. You look a sight, Jess Harker. Don't tell me you drove those poor mules all the way from Weed Creek at a gallop just to see me. There's no gallop left in those mules. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to sound impatient. Don't young ladies of fashion never wear shoes? Ever. Ever and never. Stop school teaching me, Kathy. And listen, I've got something important to tell you. Turn around. Your pants are torn. Maybe so, but that's not what I came about. I'll mend while you talk. Kathy, I'm leaving this place. Not before I've got you mended. Now turn around and hold still. You don't understand. I'm getting out of this town for good. But, but your job's here. Job? You call driving those two crowbait mules a job? Don't you see I gotta get out or I'll use up my whole life just crawling back and forth to Weed Creek? While there's real driving jobs to be had over in Wyoming territory in California. New lines opening up where I'd be needed. Ouch! Now, it's about time someone stuck some sense into you. Wanting to walk out on everyone just because you're a little fed up. Maybe this town isn't exciting enough for you. That's not it at all. It's just that a man has to get out and find a place for himself. There's nothing for me around here. Just, Harker, you're the most selfish single-track man I've ever known. Hey, wait a minute, Kathy. No sense to get all riled up. You know, wherever I go, I aim to come back for you. Maybe then it'll be too late. Come away with me, Kathy. I can't, Jess, you know that. You could if you loved me enough. But that'd be selfish and hurt other people. Everyone can't just up and run away from things because they take a sudden notion. I couldn't go away like that. You've got so much here, Jess. I made my plan. Then comes the lover, sighing like a furnace. Shakespeare. Tight as can, Uncle Ben. We don't want this cargo bouncing around. You stay here to harness up. Old Luke's kind of skittish today. Got a right to be. Could I see you for just a minute? Well, I never put a time limit on a conversation with a pretty young lady. What can I do for you, Miss Riley? Stop Jess Harker from leaving town. I didn't know he was planning on it. He's got his mind set on quitting his job and going to Wyoming or someplace. I know if he does, he'll just start drifting again like he was when he came to Red Rock. 
Well, don't you think you maybe ought to talk to Tom Davison about it? He's had more experience at handing out advice than me. If the sheriff talked to him, he'd just get his back up higher than is already. Could be. Uh, but I can't understand why he'd ever want to leave Red Rock. You're the only one he'd listen to. But you run along home. Don't you worry about it. I got an idea and it might just work. I, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Krim. <laughs> it's all right. Judy, come here. You want to make a nickel boy? Sure, Grace. Tell me what you do. Got me a driver yet, Luke? I will have. I'm pulling Thorpe off the horse headline. You mean you canceled out the run? Thought you'd already sold tickets on it. I had to cancel something. What about the Weed Creek run? It don't sell no tickets. You mean put Jess on the main line? Why not? Not this trip, Race. You're not holding that freighter reference against him, are you? No, no. No fault of his. He's just not ready yet. Oh, I've known that boy ever since he's been on this line. Helped train him myself. He can handle horses better than any man you got. I'd gamble on it. Ben, Race wants Jess Harker to take the main line special to Silver City. What do you think? Needs a little seasoning, but the boy's good, Luke. Good as the come. With Race, I'll be right there beside him every minute. Watching every move he makes. Give him a chance. Walker, let's get him over here and have a talk. Get Jess Harker. I've already sent for him. He'll be here in a moment. I guess I might have known. Mr. Bowen wants me. Come in, boy. Close the door. Jess, think you could drive the main line stage from here to Silver City? Could I? I can drive any stage any place, Mr. Bowen, and show you faster time than any driver on the line. The first concern of a good driver is the safety of his passengers and his freight, not chasing speed records. Now, wait a minute, Luke. The boy knows all about passengers and freight, but he thinks you want speed, so he shoots off about it. He'll play the cards any way you call them. Me and the boy rode out a lot of miles together, Luke. If it was my stage, Jess would be on it. Then maybe you better go along too, Ben. I'll give you an extra messenger this trip. That way I'll take the chance. Thanks, Mr. Bowen. I can handle it any way you want it. I want it to get there. This isn't just a regular run, Jess. You'll be packing the biggest load of gold we've shipped out of Red Rock in the last five years. $27,000 worth, the entire take of a new pocket at the mines. Now look, you leave Red Rock at 3 o'clock. You'll stop for only one change of horses here at Buffalo Gap. And if you keep rolling on schedule, you'll be in Silver City just a few minutes after 2 o'clock in the morning. And no one, not even the shipper, will know that it's moving today. That way there'll be no trouble. One with the silver handle. You'll not regret the choice. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Keats. Thank you a lot, Mr. Riley. Thank you. You can't drive a mainliner with a two-horse whip. Here. Bet you that dust is going to taste a lot better today, boy. Jess, you don't mean you're... I sure am. It took Bone a long time getting around to it, but he finally put me where I belong. Gotta inspect now. Right this way, Waco. Your ticket's already paid for. Grace, you did. Yes, I did. Call it a wedding present from me to the bride.
Ready, Jess? Ready to roll, Chief. Kick him off. Yeah! <laughs> Nothing with you, Race. If I felt any better, I'd bust out things. I don't go spoiling things. I water my horse. Glad to have you. Looks like you've done a far stretch of riding. Start walking to the barn. Sharks, a minute, Ben. You stay sitting right where you are. Something don't smell right, Race? I don't know yet. Stay inside, Waco. Bert? Is that you, Bert? Take that stage out of the way. You see him? Get him. Put out there! Jeff, get it up! Follow me. The rest of you keep blasting them. the mail pouch. Help me with this.
Uncle Ben. You all right, Jess? You wasted a ticket. Just rest easy. You're going to be all right. I'm going to miss the wet. Why didn't you take that coach out? Well, I couldn't pull out on you, Race. They only hog tied you. How many were there? Seven and all. I couldn't do nothing, Race. They come at me all of a sudden like. Did you know any of them? Never saw them before in my life. Race, I heard one of them talking while I was lying under the coach. I know I heard that voice someplace before. What about the leader? Did you get a good look at him? Yeah. The one they called Slater. I seen him good. Sallow looking fellow. Little thin mustache. Kind of a high, quick way of talking. That's it. That's it, Race. A guy with a red mustache. He was the one talking to Charlie Hat at the saloon. What were they talking about? He was asking about you, and Charlie was bragging how important you were to the company. Race, where are you going? We've got to take the stage to Silver City. That's your job. Do it this time. But what are you going to do? You don't need me now. There are four of them left. Bowen wants to know how many of the road agents got away. Four. Hold it there, Alan. No fast movements, please, Mr. Harker. You don't want to spoil one of my finest managing jobs. First gunshot case we've had here in Silver City in three months. Finds me so good I can hardly move at all. An excess of zeal, rare opportunity with the patient out cold and can't fight back. How long is it going to take to heal, Doc? Well, you've got a few bruises up and down your backside and a neat cut along the fourth rib. There's nothing seriously wrong that a good meal won't cure. Bowen wants to know about Race Krim. Why isn't he here? Where is he now? Where he should be after the outlaws. How much do I owe you for the patchwork, Doc? Oh, I'll send the bill to the company. That way my conscience lets me charge more. Bowen wants you back at Red Rock right away. He says you can ride with a posse as far as Buffalo Gap. Can I eat first, or do you have to telegraph Bowen? I don't think you realize how serious this thing is, Harker. I was in the right place to find out, Mr. Morrison. I'm Tex Rafferty, Tom's deputy here. You take the bay. Morrison said you'd be riding with us to the Gap. I'm staying all the way if it's all right with you, Mr. Rafferty. Ain't up to me. Take you long getting here, Tom. Long enough, Tex. You look better than I expected, Jess. I'm all right, Tom. You're glad it wasn't worse. 
Bowen's kind of anxious to talk to you. I'm not going back. Grace is out there alone. I'm staying with the posse. Guess that's up to you. All ready? Start moving. <laughs> Looks like the pouch the gold was in. Sure we're in a hurry leaving that pouch on the trail like that. Yeah, so are we. All right, boys, let's go. Never saw that one in Silver City. Known Bert? Yeah, he's one of them, all right. Race must have seen him, huh? Yeah. Race seen him. Want to take him along? No, let's get after the live ones. Come on. Here's where they split up. Next, you and your men take that left fork. The rest of you stay with me. All right, let's go. Tom, look. Want to get killed? He's right in that brush. Let's go in and get him. Stay where you are. He can see us a lot better than we can see him. Keep down out of sight. We're going to just sit here till he gets a mind to come out? Bert? You circle around that side. Cal, you take the other. Get him behind that brush and start it burning. The rest of you spread out and keep down. He might come out shooting. Don't be so itchy to use that shooting iron, Jess. You worried about his health? No, but he'll talk a lot better if he ain't dead. Got him now. Let's get him. Down. We already got enough killings against him. You pick us all off, Tom. 
There's seven guns waiting for you out here, fella. Unless you come out peaceful. I'll be about roasted now. Can't take much more of that. Tom, you still dog catching? Seen all that smoke, heard the shooting? Yeah, we smoked out a live one. One you missed. Two I didn't miss. What are you going to do with him? He's going to tell us where Slater is. Nice double crossing rattlesnake, that Slater. There's 4,000 in this pouch you carried. But there was 27,000 stolen from the coach. Yeah, Slater was smart. Picks a good spot for a holdup, then lays out the trail so only one can get away. The rest of you drawing the posse off while he escapes in the other direction. Where was he headed? Just like Slater had it figured. You'd die with your trap shut before making it easier on yourself. You're wasting your time. Where'd he go? Where? Where? North, toward the Needlestone country. Plan to hold up for a while. Where in that country? I don't know. He just said he was heading north. You're lying. No, towards the Needlestone. Wait. It figures. Slater could hold up in that country and not be found for months. You won't be needing him anymore. Let's get on with it. No, Race. I'm taking him back to Red Rock for trial. But why? We got what we want out of him. Let's hang him. Makes sense. Get my rope, boy. Stay where you are, Jess. Got four votes against you. The tender, the two passengers, and Uncle Ben. Now I'm taking it. Don't try it, Race. Hanging's the court's job. I'm holding him in jail till the judge gets to town. Maybe by then we'll have Slater, too. Tie him on a horse. How do you figure on getting him? Sitting in your office, whistling out the window? Nobody oh, can't hold up out there forever. Let him make the break. Then we'll go after him. You do it your own way. But I'm not waiting. I'm going with you, Race. No, you're not, Jess. You're coming back to Red Rock with me. Stay here with him, boy. Better go with him, Jess. Race! I can't figure it. You push this into a one-man war. It's back of it. Seems like you're covering something. Yeah. Covering my own fool mistakes. Tipping Slater off about the gold? How could you tip him off? You never saw Slater before. But he saw me shooting my big mouth off in Charlie Hatt's bar. Charlie figured something special was on. Slater got it out of it. Well, even saying that's true, you couldn't have stopped him once they jumped you? Jess could have. What do you mean? He wouldn't take the stage out and leave me, and I should have figured it. My mistakes killed Uncle Ben, Waco. And now I'm going to get Slater. I've been wondering, Tom, what if Race really tried to take the prison? You wouldn't have shot him, would you? Plug a man like Race to save an outlaw? Race is the best friend I've ever had. He still figures he has a law in his holster. He's got to learn different. Jess Harker's here. Send him in. There's 12,000 of them, Mr. Bowen. 
time and me brought in one of the outlaws with us. Ray's got two more of them. There's just one left. Glad you finally decided to come back. You don't look none the worse. I'm as good as new, Mr. Bowen. Not very good at obeying orders. You were told to be back two days ago. Yes, sir. At least you brought in a good excuse. Now, what happened at Buffalo Gap? I guess Morrison told you most of it. I want you to fill in where he didn't. When did you pull in? Five o'clock. Right on schedule. And then? Well, the relay team was waiting out in front just like it ought to have been. But Ray thought that something didn't look right and told me to take the stage out. Then they started blasting. You mean Race had time to warn you? Well, yes, sir. Every stable boy, every tenor on this line knows his first duty is to protect the passengers. You should have pulled out at the first sign of trouble without needing to be told. But you didn't have enough brains to. Even when Race told you. That would have been running out on him, Mr. Bowen. You weren't hired to protect Race. Hmm, stage driving's no job for a kid. Go get your pay at the cashier. Father says spilling tears won't put the milk back in the bucket. Why don't you eat your supper and try to forget about it? I tried to tell him I couldn't leave Race. But he wouldn't even listen to me. He just told me to get out, that's all. Kathy, you see why I had to stay. Then you think I done wrong, too. Sometimes it's awfully hard saying what's right or wrong. Well, if you're right and... Bowen's right. Then I killed those passengers. Everything that happened is my fault. Jess, it's my fault too. I asked Grace to give you that job, to stop you from leaving town. So whatever happened, I'm part of. No one's a part of it. But me. Jess, what are we going to do? I don't know, Kathy. I just don't know. You busy, Tom? Come on in. Sit down, Jess. you heard Bowen threw me out. Quit feeling sorry for yourself, Jess. You made a bad mistake. Bowen can't afford to give you a second chance. You shouldn't expect him to. I'm expecting nothing from him. What do you want out of me? A job. Maybe that'd give me a chance to make things right. You refused to obey race. Is that right? That's right. You knew he was trying to protect the passengers in the stage and you wouldn't listen to him. It was Race's job to stay when the trouble started. And he stayed. And it was Uncle Ben's. He stayed too. What was your job? Looking after the stage. Bowen ordered you back to Red Rock. What'd you do? I didn't go. What? I said I didn't go. I... I was wrong dead wrong. You do what you wanted to do because you haven't grown up enough to know the meaning of responsibility. How can you expect me to take a chance and pin a badge on you? All right, Tom, I was wrong. Everything I'd done was wrong. I know it. I'm sick about it. I thought maybe that you might give me the chance to make it up some. I was wrong about that, too. Jess. Yes. 
job you're taking on won't wear as easy as this tin badge. You already made two mistakes. Don't make another. Say, Tom, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Don't think I'm complaining, but how long you figure on sitting around here waiting for Slater to make that break so we can go out after him? It all works kind of slow sometimes, Jess. It's like fishing. Nothing we can do except keep the hooks out and keep them baited. Tom Davidson, what can I do for you? Name's Horner. J.M. Horner. Got a ranch up in the hills south of Needlestone. Don't get to town much. Don't like people none. Well, what'd you come to town for this time? Might be I got information you could use, but it ain't free. How do I know it's worth anything till I know what it's about? I ain't talking for nothing. How much do you want? I want to get paid for my time. Ain't coming all the way down from Needlestone for nothing. Figure it's worth six bits. Fella stopped by my place this morning, walking. Said his animals died and put him afoot. Bought a horse and a burra. Said he was a prospector head for the gold country. Paid too much for him. Never argued about the price. Paid cash. Never knew a prospector with cash. Never knew one used a horse. Always walk. Lead their burrows. What'd he look like? Clothes all right, but not dirty enough. No gold around there anyway. Did he have a thin mustache? Not a whisker. Oh, our man would have shaved that off first thing. Was his skin kind of yellowish? Don't recollect so. Reddish brown, like berry stain. Backtracked him. Found where he'd been. Holed up in a cave. No dead animals around. No sign he'd had any. You're a sharp man, Mr. Horner. You check which way he headed after he bought the animals. Not born yesterday, nor the day before. The horse I sold him was shod with toe and heel clips. Easy to follow. Tracks headed up northeast toward Crow Mountain. Chased cows around it once. Old Indian trail to the other side of it. Corkscrews north somewhere. That's a good six bits worth, Mr. Horner. Figured it was. Gold country starts back of that mountain. Slater might head in there, maybe work a claim. As a prospector, he could ship all the gold he wants and no questions asked. Might even use company coaches to ship it. Yeah. You were sure right about baiting those hooks, Tom. Well, we got a bite. Now let's see if we can land them. Like you said, shot with toe and heel clips. Going northeast. Wait here. Decide to lighten his load. Knows he's being followed. Maybe he's seen us coming up. Yeah, us and someone else. You guess it might be race, Tom? Not much guess to it. No wonder Slater's acting so scared. Say, you think he might have left the gold pots too? <laughs> he's not that scared. Oh, 
Oh. Toe and heel clips. Better leave our horses here, too. He's in them rocks up there. I got Slater mouse trapped up in those rocks. I'm going up after him. We're all going. I want him alive. Well, he ain't going to be. That ledge dropped straight off into the lake. You stay where you are. Yes, you cover the right side. I'm going up the middle where I can watch racing. Slater both. And Jess, it's important one of us gets to Slater before a race gets there. So it doesn't finish him off. Let's go.
Don't shoot, you got him stopped. Drop it. Sorry. Look around and see if you can find where he left the gold while we pick him up. Come on. Hey, Cal! Race from the sheriff's back. They got the outlaw with him. Uncle Ben, didn't he, and Waco, too? Them are two others. That rattlesnake lived too long already. Let's get the other gunny out of jail. He don't look big enough. He'll kill four of them. He'll look big as stretching a rope. Hey, Tom, I got a new rawhide rope for him. Swing him both on the same tree. Wait, he won't make him no cure. Let's get him inside, Dot. Handle him gently, Dot. He's kind of stiff in the leg. He'll be stiffer in the neck. All right, mister? Get down real easy. All right, boys, let's stand clear. Dodd's got a cell waiting for him. What do you need a cell for, Tom? All we need is limb of a tree. Go home to your wife, Jake. He'll hang when he's stood trial. He don't need no trial. We know he done it. Trial's a waste of time and money. Let's grab him and get moving. Shut up and listen to me, all of you. Stop shooting off a lot of foolish talk. There won't be any hanging in this town until a judge says so. We ain't waiting for no judge, Tom. This one didn't wait for Uncle Ben or Waco. Let's get a rope on. Hold it. I ain't asking you to wait long. The judge will be here in the morning. And you get all the hanging you want. Old Law Belly holding court here tomorrow, Tom? Didn't figure he was due in for two weeks. I said he'd be here in the morning, Josh, and he'll be here. Now go home and eat your dinner. That goes for the rest of you. What do you say, Race? Tom's doing the same. Jess, bring those pouches inside. I got them, Tom. The rest of you better get to bed early. Some of you will be called for jury duty tomorrow. Coming in with this race? You won't be needing me. Lucky thing that judge is coming tomorrow. He isn't, but I hope that'll keep him quiet till we get it. Dodd, get right over to Bowen's office and set on that telegraph key and find the judge. He may be in Sheridan or Silver City. Tell him to get here right away before Judge Lynch beats him to it. Oh, Dodd, uh, better take these pouches with you. I don't think this will be a safe place for storing gold. What can I do? Round up some grub and some extra blankets. We'll be here for a while. Saved a heap of trouble if you'd have brung Slater back lying across his saddle. Tom's doing it his way. Sure. Feeding him. Keeping him warm. Real tender, Charlie. Most good enough to serve them jailbirds. They wouldn't be swallowing so good if we done what we ought to. Jury trying ain't sure anyways. Man's guilty, court gets him, messes up things with lawyer talk. Maybe he bails out free. Yeah, like that fellow in Montana last year. Why are we sitting here waiting? There's enough of us here to take care of them now. No. I've got as much reason as any man in town for wanting them hung. Tom said the judge will be here in the morning. We're waiting. Morrison said the judge hasn't come to Silver City yet. Haven't heard a thing from him. We'll try Sheridan. Jeff. 
Riley? Kathy wanted to be sure we wouldn't be starved out. How are things around town? Quiet. Except for that crowd over at Hat Saloon. Drowning their feelings, I guess. You think they'll stay there? If the whiskey don't run, I'm out of talk. Looks like you're getting ready for more and talk. Taking no chances. Folks will be a little restless come morning. Especially if that judge is a little late getting here. You think Dodd is reaching them all right? I've stopped thinking. Just hoping. The judge says he's got a trial to finish in Sheridan tomorrow. Doesn't see how I can do it. Well, he's got to do it. Luke, you think it'd do any good to get Tom over here? Might sound a little stronger coming from him. Yeah, be worth a try. Keep him on the wire. It's me, Bond. I gotta talk to you, Tom. Grace! The judge ain't coming. Says he ain't. I heard it. I was right there by the telegraph. Bowen's gone after Tom. Kind of different from what Tom said. What are you going to do, Race? Let him sit there till old Law Belly gets around to coming? I've sat here as long as I'm going to. What about you, Race? Let's go get him. Appears like I had Tom figured all wrong. Charlie, start turning off them lamps. You better hurry, Tom. I'll be leaving you alone here for a few minutes, Jess. Lights are out in Charlie Hatt's place and everything's pretty quiet. I want to be across the street. If anything happens, I can get right back. You're in charge now, Jess. Keep everything locked up and don't let anybody in. Sir, Tom. Tell Judge Webb I say either he gets here tomorrow or there won't be any prisoners left to try. The judge says he's leaving for Red Rock tonight. Thanks for the use of the wire loop. All right. Don't reach, Tom. Now it's my turn. I'm telling you, I had the judge on a telegraph myself. He's on his way here now. Hold in there. Jess is in there alone, Race. You're putting him right in the middle, between a bloodthirsty mob and the prisoners. Jess won't be in it at all. Kid will see it my way. Don't count on that. Jess is working for me now. He's working for Bowen at Buffalo Gap. He stuck with me then. Tonight will be no different. Stick this in his mouth. Just save you trying to slip any knots.
Open up, Jess. I'm taking over. Hurry up and open the door. No, Race. The door's staying closed. Now, don't be a fool, son. We're coming in after him. Just open up the door and skip and you'll be out of it. The law's got these prisoners, Race. Tell them to go back. No use waiting on him, Race. Come on, let's bust our way in. Come on out, son. Tom and Dot ain't coming back. You're all alone. There ain't no need for you to mix in this. Now unlock that door, like I say. Tom left me in charge. The judge will be back by morning. Tell him to wait till then, Race. The judge ain't coming. Tom lied to us and you know it. Where are your brains, boy? You, you got no call to stand up for that pair of killers. It was your coach and your passengers. He ain't coming out, Race. Talk's wasting time. I ain't asking you again, Jess. Are you coming out? I can't. I gotta stay. Let's cut the talk. Let's oh, smash yeah. it in. Knock the go. door down. Come on, let's fuck our way in. Come on. Don't look like nothing will stop him, Mr. Bourne. Don't tell him how bad it'll get. We'd better get ready to move that gold out of here. Get my saddlebags. And get back from the door, son, so you don't get hurt. Get us out of here, kid. You got us trapped. That way won't do it. Use the axes. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's true, kid. Open these cell doors or they'll kill us like rats. Give us some guns so we have a chance. Mr. Bowen! Mr. Bowen! Away, son. You've done everything Tom could expect. Ray, stop! They're coming closer. I gotta shoot. This is me, boy. Race. You can't shoot me. Get the cell key off him, Race. Give me the key, Jess. No, Race. Please, go back. Race, why didn't you stop? All right, boys. We got four guns behind you. Just stay where you are. Nobody'll get hurt. Jake, get the doctor. Better start moving, boys. It's the only thing you could do, Jess. He wouldn't stop, Tom. Kept coming forward. He left you no choice. I'd have done the same. kids got inside of them. Come in. Are you gone without even seeing me? Didn't think you'd want to see me after what I did. Nobody would. Well, you did what was right. You stopped a lynching. It's no use, Kathy. I can't stay around here any longer. I gotta go away. Then I'll go with you.
Traveling? And I guess you might be. I think you ought to go in and see Race before you leave. I just can't do it, Tom. You did something much harder at the jail. Be all right, Race. You never seen a good messenger die in bed. But you cut it might close, boy. I wasn't trying to cut it close, Race. I was trying to stop you any way I could. And I guess I'm lucky you can drive a stagecoach straight in and shoot. You didn't teach me shooting. If I rest a while, boy, I feel my tired. Sure, Race. Got your ticket, ma'am? Drivers' wives travel on passes. Only on the honeymoon. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye. Hey, Jeff. Forgot something. Ready to roll, Chief. Kick him off, Jess. All things change. For this is nature's plan. He went to sleep a boy. Awoke a man. Me own.